Welcome back to The Real News Network. We're joined again by Min Chi Lee. He teaches at the University of Utah, and he was once a political prisoner for a couple of years in China. His recent book is The Rise of China and the Demise of the Capitalist World Economy. It was published in 2009. Thanks for joining us again, Min Chi. Thank you, Paul. So uh, in one of our earlier interviews, we talked about whether or not China was really pulling out of the global recession and how much it had been affected. Uh, at the time, you'd suggested that a lot of this was, was really just state stimulus spending and circulating of more money. To what extent do you think that was a correct call? And is China really out of the woods? Or, or uh, as we're seeing in the, in the West, this recovery they're calling it, they're using the word fragile. I think there's, it, it's really questionable whether it really is a recovery. But what's happening in China? Well, I guess it all depends on your definition of recovery. And, but uh, to be fair, we should recognize that uh, the Chinese economy certainly is heading, uh, moving ahead uh, at a much more rapid pace compared to the Western economies. So the uh, United States, for example, is growing right now at about two or three percent a year. And uh, the recovery is very slow. And we know that unemployment, unemployment stays very high. By contrast, uh, in the first half of this year, the Chinese economy grows at a rate of about 11%. But on the other hand, uh, the fundamental problem is that the Chinese economy continues to rely heavily upon investment, which accounts for about 50% of the GDP. And the first half of this year, uh, it continued to grow more rapidly, the investment continued to grow more rapidly than the overall economy. So by that, you mean state investment? No, actually, state investment is only about 40% of that. And so the rest, 60% would be uh, private investment, including both domestic and foreign. So what's wrong with that? I mean, why is that a problem? Well, the one problem is that when you have too much investment, then you build extra uh, capacity, but you don't find the customers to, to buy the uh, uh, actual product. And China is able to export a lot, but now the Western markets are stagnating. So you don't have customers there. And then in uh, recent months, more and more of the investment is concentrated in the property sector. So the worry is that uh, you could generate a housing bubble, uh, which co potentially could lead to a later economic collapse. Well, if the United States and Europe and Canada and much of the rest of the world sinks back into deep recession, to what extent will China be immune, or, or does it really throw China into a tailspin as well? Well, yes, yeah, uh, the Western countries do return to recession, and that will have serious impact on the Chinese economy, although I don't think that to be a very likely scenario in the next two or three years. But in four or five years, the risk, risk is very high. Why? Right now, the U.S. and the other countries have relied upon a high fiscal deficit to sustain the economy, that cannot be relied upon forever. And moreover, in a few years, and I would expect that because of the uh, oil demand in Asia and other parts of the world continue to rise, and on the other hand, it will be more and more difficult for the world to increase oil production. So we arrive at this peak oil moment, and that's going to cause global energy crisis. That will kill the global economy. Because oil prices will go through the roof. Yes similar to 2008. So China can see this coming. Uh, is there any measures that they can take? Uh, I guess what I'm asking is, is the China, Chinese economy any more of a planned economy? I know they use the words, that they talk about a planned economy, but they've kind of unleashed a lot of spontaneous capitalist forces in every direction. But is China more planned than some of the Western countries and, and thus more capable of dealing with some of this? Well, in fact, China now calls it itself a socialist market economy. It's, if you think about China, it's uh, somewhat in contradiction. So it calls itself a socialist market economy to a large extent. It's not very different from a standard capitalist economy. On the other hand, your impression is true that uh, China does tend to have somewhat more state influence with respect to the economy compared to Western countries. Uh, especially compared to today's uh, Western capitalist countries. On the other hand, because China has got a higher level of corruption, and uh, so the overall effective effectiveness of the state policies and laws 
are not as effective as in Western countries. So you have to balance against the overall stronger state influence against this background of uh, corruption and the lower effect effectiveness of central government intervention. The other big question that keeps being asked is to what extent will China continue to believe in the US dollar? It owns trillions of US dollars, but there's been a lot of talk about whether there's going to be some attempt to float another international reserve currency. Uh, where are things at now with, in terms of Chinese thinking? Well, I think the Chinese government is to some extent aware of this potential danger about holding two trillion dollars of foreign exchange reserves in the form of US dollars. But on the other hand, I don't think that, uh, I don't think they will actually do anything to, for example, to sell the US dollar on a massive scale. And because that's going to hurt not only the US economy, that's going to trigger the collapse, of the global economy, including the Chinese economy. And so the potential question is that in the future, as the global economy moves into the next stage of crisis, and that's going to cost the Chinese economy as well. So, and you're talking about that within two to three years. Four, four, five years, I would say. Four to five years, <laughs> around 2015. Around, right. Okay, well, I'm sure we'll be interviewing you again before then, but certainly we'll talk again in 2015. And and, and, and hopefully we'll, we'll all be in a position still to be doing all of this. That I will expect. Thanks very much for joining us, Minchi. Thank you very much. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.